I paid $3,150 for all of these graphics cards put together. They were marked as salvage when I bought them. That means that they might work fine or they could be all broken. If I can fix all of them, then I'll be able to make some money on them. If I can't fix all of them, then I definitely won't be able to. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB. More on them in a minute. The first graphics card I want to test is this little guy. This is a Gigabyte GT1030. It costs about $100 retail. Used, they go on eBay for about 50 bucks. This is the first time I've done any graphics card testing ever. I've also only repaired one graphics card in my entire life, so this should get interesting. I think we can put this guy in this computer, but I don't know for sure. I'm just going to try it. But first, we have to remove the original card. I've already got the little uh, thumb screws out here. I've got the PCIe slot lock depressed back here and then we just pull it straight up and there we go i don't see any uh issues on the board that i can tell right away let's see what happens hdmi cable plugged into this graphics card now let's turn this pc on and see what happens okay we got a windows screen that's good so i'm gonna get logged in and then we'll do some testing on this graphics card and see how it does okay i'm gonna be using heaven benchmark for this test this is actually my first time using it, so let's go run and see what happens. I'm not going to get into all the little details of test testing each of these graphics cards because I'm not a graphics card expert. What I'm looking for is whether they work, whether they show a good quality on the screen, and those are the main two things that I'm looking for. Okay, the frame rate is extremely low, but I think I would expect that with a cheaper graphics card. So after testing this for about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, it actually looks pretty good. I don't see any uh, artifacts or any any distortions on the screen, and it has performed the in the entire time. There's no been no uh, serious blackouts or anything like that. So with that being said, let's move on to the next card, and this one definitely has some problems because the back of it is not even screwed on. So let's check this one out and see what's going on with it. So here we have a GeForce GTX 1080. ACX 3.0, no idea what that means. And this one has been taken apart. Oh, I already see a problem right here. So this part right here has just totally been blown out, it looks like. So we got a faulty capacitor here. I am gonna take this card apart the rest of the way just to check the other side of the board and make sure there's nothing else going on there. We're definitely gonna need to install the perfect amount of thermal paste, but let's inspect the board and see if there's anything else going on. So now I'm just looking for any other obviously damaged components. So far I don't see any over here. And everything over here looks pretty good too. So as far as I can tell, this is the only bad component on this graphics card. So let's get that replaced. And then I think it'll be time to install it into our test PC and see what happens. <laughs> wow, look at this. This part of this capacitor has just been totally blown away. Let's take a look at one of these other ones. This part right here is what's blown away. We've got a nice big pad right here. So that's good news because we don't have to do anything too crazy when it comes to repairing any traces. So what we need to do is replace this capacitor and then we'll have to figure out a way to mount it to this um, circuit trace right here. First thing I wanna do though is clean this up a little bit, get a better look at it. And then after that we can remove it and install a new one. Okay, it looks a lot better after cleaning this area up. You can see that part of this circuit trace has been um, basically exploded, uh, eaten away. And so what I'm gonna do is clean this all up right here. Some of the copper has already been exposed and there is a little bit of solder right here, a little puddle of it. So this should be actually a pretty easy fix. So I'm gonna remove this, this capacitor now, this old one, and then we'll install a new one onto it. And then I think it'll be time to test. I'll be using my hot air soldering station. I'm gonna apply some flux first, that helps the solder flow. Then my hot air station will heat the component and the solder up until the solder melts, then I can remove it. Now we got this capacitor soldered on nice and solidly. It has a lot of solder on this side. That's because I had to add a lot extra to get a nice connection to this pad over here. But now we got this replaced. Now it's time to apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. 
And now with the perfect amount of thermal paste, this graphics card is definitely gonna work. Definitely gonna work. Definitely gonna work. JLC PCB is one of the best places to get your custom PCBs manufactured and assembled. And one of the best parts about JLC PCB is their full service website. You can order your custom PCBs and track the manufacturing process in real time. Once you're on the order page, all you have to do is add your Gerber file, then you can select the layers, dimension, the quantity, design, and all of these other options all right from their website. So as you can see, ordering your custom manufactured PCB from JLC PCB is super easy. Once you have all your customizations made, all you have to do is save it to your cart, then JLC PCB will get it manufactured and sent to you quickly. With 16 years of PCB manufacturing experience, JLC PCB has a well-trained engineering and customer support team. This ensures that not only will you get the best product, you'll also get excellent customer service. You can go right to jlcpcb.com to check out their services. I'll put a link in the description that'll take you right there. Comment down below with your JLC PCB experience and you can get a $50 JLC PCB discount card. We're just getting ready to put this cover back on and you can even see on here where that uh, little mini explosion happened. And out with the little baby graphics card and in with this monster. Okay, we have it all hooked up. I'm gonna power it on. We need to watch for any sparks, listen for any pops. Let's see what happens. Oh, we got some light on it. That's good news, I think. Ah, uh, it's still not giving out any sort of display. So it looks like the fans aren't fully spinning on this graphics card either. So we've definitely still got more issues. So I'm gonna turn this back off get the graphics card out and let's inspect it a little more. I tore down that entire PC so I could get just the motherboard so then I could have better access to the test points on this graphics card. So next I'm gonna start testing voltages and see if we can figure out why this is showing no display, but it seems to be starting up fine. So let's get it powered on. Now let's start checking voltages. I'm first gonna check and see if there's voltage into the card, which I suspect there will be. 12 volts, 12 volts on that connector and 12 volts. So we've got 12 volts coming in through both of these connectors. Next, let's see what we have on these inductors right here. 12 volts, 12 volts, and let's check for a five volt and a 1.8 volt line. There's our five volt, and there's our 1.8. So, so far we've got all the voltages we should have. I'm gonna check voltage over on the HDMI port over here, and we have five volts on the HDMI system and then we also have a 3.3 volt line. I'm not exactly sure which of the pins on the port should have those voltages, but it is good to know that they're there. So I don't see any problems with any of the voltages. For some reason though, it's still not sending signal through the HDMI port out to a display. I have tried it with a monitor and a DVI cable, and unfortunately that also didn't work. So none of the display options are working. I'm gonna try one other thing on this card, and then if we can't find any problems here, I just don't know where else to go. But I do wanna check all of the zero ohm resistors just to see if there's anything shorted out. So let's do that next, and then if we can't figure it out, we'll move on. So we've got a group of zero ohm resistors right here. Let's check those first. Good, good, good. When you hear it beep, that just means that there is a path through this for the electrical current. So that tells us that those are not shorted out. Let's check these guys. Essentially these zero ohm resistors, at least from my understanding, is they work basically as fuses. Let's flip the board over and check the other side. Okay, so no problems there so far. Let's just double check all of these capacitors and make sure that none of these have a short to ground. One side should be shorted to ground, the other side should not be. Okay, and no problems there at all. So this graphics card has all the voltages it should have. It has nothing shorted that I've tested that I can find. I'm thinking maybe a problem with the processor itself, but unfortunately there's just no way for me to know. If you have some ideas of what might be wrong, leave that down in the comment section. I am using a 600 watt power supply, which should be plenty for this card. So I'm just not sure where else to go. So for now, let's move on to the next graphics card. And next we got the EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 FTW2. 
I don't see any issues. The warranty sticker has been removed. I guess this is an issue from the outside. This guy's all bent up. Other than that, I don't see any issues. So I'm gonna fix this real quick and then we'll plug it in and see what it does. Yeah, that's a little better. Now we'll plug this into our test setup here. Will it power on and show a picture? Let's find out. Okay, we did have a little bit of fan movement, that's good. So we had power initially, the fans did just spin just a little bit, but we have no signal at all on another one. So next I'm gonna do some voltage testing, see if it's got voltage to the board how it should, and then we'll go from there. Now in order to do that testing, I'm gonna need to take this apart just so it's a bare board. I mean, to be fair, I wanted to take it apart anyway. And no obvious problems so far. So next we're gonna take off these four screws. That should enable us to remove the entire board off the heatsink. Here we go. To me, it looks like maybe somebody's had this apart. I think they, these have been replaced. I don't think that's factory. It actually has new thermal paste, it looks like. I mean, definitely not the perfect amount, but at least it is new thermal paste. So I think somebody's been into this before, and I also already see an area that's discolored. This area right in here to me looks like it's pretty discolored. Let's get under the microscope and check that out. So this is the color of electronics overheating. Like this has gotten so hot that it is totally discolored this area. I think I see another place too. It's a similar story over here on this guy right here. This has also gotten super hot. And another area down here that has also gotten super hot. You'll notice a lot of these are around these little ICs. So that's making me a little worried that this board has been totally overheated. I would guess probably by overclocking this GPU. That is just a guess, but it would make sense. Another thing I've noticed is there's like, kind of like this liquid all around here. And I'm, I'm guessing what's happened is that's kind of like leached out of these uh, thermal pads. That's just a guess, but that's what it looks like to me. I don't see anywhere that this thing has been repaired or attempted to be repaired. So here's my issue with this graphics card. This graphics card to me looks like it's been overclocked significantly and overworked and obviously heat damaged. So no matter what I do to it, even if I find some problems and fix them, there's gonna be always, in my opinion, there's probably gonna be other components that are gonna be constantly going bad because it's just been so overheated so many times. Now these components are just the components we can see. We can't see the condition of the chip itself or the condition of the solder balls under the chip. But in my opinion, this graphics card is one that is just not worth repairing and probably one that I'll just try and sell for parts so someone can use the parts off of this to repair another better GPU. Now, while this is a bummer, I think it's the best option for this one. If you have a different opinion, leave it down in the comments. I wanna see what you have to say if you have more experience with me in fixing broken GPUs. Let's move on to the next one. That last GPU is worth about $500, and this one is also worth about $500. This one is an EVGA GeForce RTX 2070 Super. Let's get this one plugged in and see if it works. Okay, and it is all plugged in now. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. So we got one fan, the other fan. Let's see if we get a picture, getting something. Well, this is sort of good news. We got some glitching going on up here. It is possible that I just need to update the drivers on this thing, but at least we have a picture on this one. And here we go, let's see what happens. So we're at 66 frames per second, 110 frames per second. And there's absolutely no graphical glitches in this. That looks really good. Okay, and that wasn't a super long test, but the test I did showed that this graphics card is working really well. I don't see any problems with it. I'm gonna do another physical inspection off camera, but let's move on to the next one. And next we have this EVGA GeForce RTX 3060, worth about $550 used on eBay. So I'm gonna plug it in. Let's see what happens. Okay, will it power on? 
Yes, fan spin, good news so far. Let's see if we get a display. And we do so far. So far, we're only getting graphics cards that either aren't fixable or nothing wrong. So hopefully we get a good repair in on one of these. Okay, it looks good so far. Okay, let's run this tester. Oh, we got some green dots in here. That's no good. That could be uh, just a connection issue. I'll have to check my HDMI cable. Ooh, fatal error. Let's see what we have. Can't initialize GPU monitor. Out of memory, out of memory, out of memory. Okay, well, let's try that one more time and see what happens. And it looks like it crashed our tester. So we definitely have something going on with this. Let's get it unplugged and open it up and see if we can figure out what's going on. So this one has not been open before. I'm wondering if we're gonna see the same things we saw on the other one that had a lot of heating issues or it looked like it had a lot of heating issues. Okay, and the thermal paste looks good. It's nice and wet still. So let's have a look. So if we take a look here, right there we can see it. You can see the discoloration we've got going on right here on this corner. That's not too bad other than that. But this obviously makes me wonder about this GPU. I feel like it's probably toast. Let's try this though. Let's start it back up and let's watch it with a thermal camera and see what the temperatures look like on the board. Okay, and we definitely have some heat on the GPU right now. 111 degrees right there. We do have a picture on the screen. So let's start up that test again and then we'll see what part of the GPU gets hot or if anything else gets hot. Oh yeah, it's all getting hot now. I don't see any of the actual memory chips getting warm, just the GPU itself. So I'm actually gonna stop this test now just because I don't wanna overheat this GPU even more than it already has been. I mean, it's already sort of toast, but might as well not do any more damage than we need to. All right, and we already lost the picture as well, so let's get this thing turned off before we do too much damage to it. So right down here showed the most heat on the GPU just when the, with the computer at idle. Obviously over here is discolored more, but there was a lot of heat going on down here before we really even did anything uh, with the GPU. So unfortunately, I think this is another one where this GPU chip itself is probably faulty and there's just no good way to repair that. So yet another unfixable graphics card, but let's forget about this one and move on to the next one. So we have two graphics cards left. This GeForce RTX 2080 Ti is one of them, but it's also missing pretty much all the screws. So hopefully we can get this one working. We're not doing so well as far as making our money back. That doesn't look good. We got thermal paste on top of thermal paste. That's an interesting strategy. We got all sorts of stuff going on in here. So we got some thermal pads down there and then more thermal pads on top. So this wasn't even contacting the heat sink. The heat sink is totally clean. Oh boy. Wow, look at this. There's just thermal pads on top of thermal pads. So I, I'm thinking what happened here is somebody want, wait a second, we're missing an entire memory chip. Oh man. When I first opened this, I was hoping I could just fix this thermal pad problem. But unfortunately with this missing RAM chip, this is definitely not gonna work. And looking at this more, this thing's missing all sorts of parts. It's missing all of these diodes along here. It's missing more over here. It's missing this chip right over here. So somebody used this, took a bunch of parts off of it, and then returned it back to the store. Unfortunately, that is a risk I take when I buy salvage items from retail return centers. So this is just part of the game, especially with the demand of graphics cards recently, especially when I bought these, I bought these several months ago. The, this kind of stuff is gonna be more common. There's gonna be more people out there doing stuff like this so they can repair other graphics cards and then still get their money back on these graphics cards. 
So unfortunately, since I bought this as salvage, there's nothing I can do and I just have to take the hit on it. Let's move on to the last graphics card. And our last one is this Gigabyte Radon 6800 XT. This one looks like it's in much better condition than the last one. So let's plug it in and see what it does. Wow, and this one is chunky. This thing's like almost bigger than the entire motherboard I got here. Okay, let's power on the board, see what happens. Okay, we got some light on the graphics card, that's good. The fans moved a little bit. Let's see if we get a picture. Oh, feels like that fan is rubbing. I don't think that should cause a no signal, but that's definitely something we need to figure out. I think before we do any further testing, let's see if we can get that fan figured out and then we'll start it up again. And while we're doing that, we can check out the motherboard and see if there's anything going on there. So let's get it torn down and take a look at that fan. So one of the first things I noticed here is these are custom cut thermal pads. So that means that somebody has been into this and they've replaced the thermal pads. I'm hoping this graphics card is salvageable, but right now I don't have a lot of hope just because I'm guessing this could be a similar one to like the others where it's just been used and abused. And after they were done with it and the GPU is faulty, they return it to the store so they can get their money back. But let's do a little bit of testing on it and just see if we can happen to fix it. So here is the bottom of the GPU after removing the plate that goes over it. And it is unfortunately just as I suspected. You can see all of this discoloration. This goes all the way around the GPU. So this tells me that this GPU has likely been extremely hot for long periods of time. And that probably means that the GPU itself is bad. Let's go through and just do some ohms and voltage testing just to make sure there's nothing else obvious going on. But I think this one is probably going to be a lost cause. Okay, and I don't see any shorts to ground on this board, so I'm going to plug it back in and just make sure everything's got voltage that needs it. 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. And we have all of the voltage we need down there. 5 volts there. We also have 5 volts over on our HDMI system. 12 volts over to our main power rail over here. And I will double check and make sure there's voltage down on the PCIe slot. 3.3, 3.3. And it looks like there is. So unless I'm missing something, which is entirely possible by the way, unless I'm missing something, this is yet another graphics card where the GPU is likely the only fault because it has voltage everywhere that it technically needs it, at least that I know of, but unfortunately it's still just not putting out anything to the TV. So what have we learned about buying salvage graphics cards? Well, I've learned that it seems like a lot of people are just buying these, using them until the GPU burns out, then taking them back to the store, getting their money back, and buying another one. So I've learned not to buy any more salvage GPUs, but I'm still mostly glad I did it this time so I can learn more about them and how they work. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it wasn't very satisfying from a repair perspective. I hope it was still interesting and satisfying to watch. If you want to see a video where I took a broken graphics card and actually was able to fix it, I'll put that up on your screen now so you can go check that out. Thank you again to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching it, and I hope you have a good one.